Hey there, friends. I hope that you are having a sunny Monday. We had a soggy Super Bowl Sunday, but we are having a sunny Monday. That was hard to say. <laughs> I hope you are having a sunny Monday as well. I've got a couple new journals to go in the shop, and these are spring-themed journals. Just something to kind of cheer us up and make us happy. Lots of sparkle, lots of fun. The first journal is a butterfly journal. You can see the text of the, the food packaging box that I use through here. To me, that just adds another layer and another dimension to things. I think it looks... Uh, I think it looks cool, and I think it makes the, the piece really interesting to people when they pick it up. Um, you know, they'll say, well, that's an unusual book, and you can say that's a book made from food packaging. And it's nice to be able to alter and transform, you know, just kind of those everyday things and keep them out of the landfill. Our bead strand is just sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. It is just all kinds of fun. I, <laughs> I'm i so fortunate that my friend sent me some beads. I was really kind of running out. I had gone to the craft shop to pick some up, and but boy, I seem to use a lot of beads, so I'm so appreciating her sweet gift of beads to me. I wanted to take you through this, so let's just kind of go through here. Butterflies, to me, represent metamorphosis. They represent... Um, you know, a changing into something else, right? They start out as a caterpillar, they change into something else, uh, change into a beautiful butterfly. And I think that uh, particularly being a girl person, you know, that we gravitate to uh, that sort of change because we go through changes as we, as we go through our lives, you know, probably more than our male counterparts. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Of course, we're starting with story. And here's your storybook. I've started adding a little stack of sticky notes for you guys, too. So as you're going through this book, you can add sticky notes on pages that you are particularly interested in. So let's take a look here. This is from, um, I believe, a 1992 uh, botany book. The, the book isn't just about botany. It is like a compendium of all kinds of things that encompass history and biology and science and innovation. It has timelines in it. It was one of those things that I was really afraid this morning that I was going to get completely lost in. <laughs> so I was trying not to get lost in it. Uh, this is a picture of a bee with all of its parts and pieces. We can't really think about uh, butterflies without thinking about bees, without thinking about insects, you know, without thinking about summer. Um, that's a very pleasant thought for me. I know that uh, we have a mosquito problem up here sometimes, but, you know, that's okay. I really don't mind. Um, I would like to build some bat boxes. Bat boxes uh, combat mosquitoes on a you know, on a, a very natural kind of level. This is a sweet story, y'all, from Victoria Magazine, Intimate Home. Um, I'll just give you a little, just a, a, a brief little read. In a small house painted in soft hues of pink and bluish gray, a woman surrounds herself with things as whimsical in nature as the cards she designs. Articles of enchantment are found throughout her property, in her garden of creeping flocks, purple salvia, foxgloves, morning glories, and herbs. A shady path leads past three cast iron duck sentries to the pale blue door of a miniature pink cottage. Oh, swoon. I, I think that's a she shed. <laughs> this book was written before, you know, we typically had the the uh, the verbiage for she shed, but oh my goodness, I think a she shed is a wonderful a wonderful concept. And you know, it doesn't really have to be a shed, does it? It can be a room, you know, just a room of your own. Uh, lovely papers. Some of them are these handmade Indian papers, which I'm just crazy about. Lots of things for you to uh, think about and draw upon. I was, you know, I'm thinking about butterflies, you think about gardens, you think about 
uh, all of the the gardens that are under the ocean. So I thought it might be fun for you to design an underwater uh, garden. So I put this little guy in here for you. There's so much under underwater. You know, there, there are programs to cultivate the land underwater because we're we're not using our our on land resources in the way that we should. I'm adding fabric swatches to these books, so I hope that you guys enjoy those. This is a I, I love this paper. It's got kind of a finish on it, kind of a slick finish. Your washi tape says, make today amazing. And I've got a bookmark in here for you. Some of my inky papers. I'm loving inky papers. I finished these with some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. So they sparkle like you just would not believe. They're so much fun to play with. More fabric for you. Another part of the botanical book, this time about migration. And let's see, what else is it? Let's, let's pull it out and see what else is in here. Let's not stumble down any rabbit holes. Let's just see what's in here. Oh, okay. Plants and food plants. So you've got a description of eucalyptus, carrot plants, potato plants, snapdragons, mint, daisies, onion, iris, ginger, orchid. Really nice. Um, this gives the Latin name of the plant and the parts used and the purpose of the plant. Oh, it's so cool. Love things like that. Should have been a scientist or a botanist or a researcher. <laughs> this is from a very old sympathy card. I love it because it has kind of a vellum-ish texture to it. I like to put some inspiration in here for you guys. It says, what's life without a little risk? Our lives are defined by opportunities, even the ones we missed. You know, sometimes I think, oh, I regret this and I regret that. But really, I am exactly where I'm supposed to be, and so are we all. If we just, um, you know, have faith that this is where we are supposed to be, and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, it makes it a little bit easier to live life when you kind of look at it from that perspective. I have some dotty, shiny dotty paper for you. The paper under here says sunny state of mind and a bookmark for you to play with. This is a, a paper pad, and I made these kind of small so you can play with them with the ATCs, but there, it's just all kinds of paper. Um, you can just flip through here and see all the different kinds of paper for you to just have some fun with. I try not to waste paper. I try to not waste not one one little scrap. Tickets for you. I did a little bit of stamping on some inky papers, and that came out a lot of fun. I put some cardstock in here for you to play with, as well as border strips. Things to color. A little bit of, um, I loved her. Precious moments. She likes to explore. So I can just imagine her walking in the garden with her kitty cat. And there are some birdies over here. She's whistling a little tune and there's a butterfly right there. She was just precious. She was a good thing to use in this book. Um, more plant explanations. This one, uh, a red, red Dead nettle, ragwort, verbenia, cyclamen, loco weed, oxide, daisy. Don't you love the names of plants? Aren't they just the best things ever? Lots of papers. This is a bookmark for you. It's already stamped with a butterfly, and you can color that butterfly or paint it or whatever you want to do. I'm kind of crazy about circles. You all know that. And I offset those circles with some squares up here. This is the Indian paper that I am just crazy about. A strand of flowers for you. You can easily cut these apart and use them on ATCs or what other ever other kind of art project you might have going on. This is a chipboard piece. You can paint this, color it, spray it, 
do whatever you want to with it and make it uniquely and originally yours. And then maybe you can name that plant. You know, think of a cool um, name for you to, uh, to name that plant that you just colored and invented. More fabric swatches. This is some of the Reminisce magazine, 1992. This is about the dirty 30s filled with joys and woes. It's just really, act I, I am amazed that people actually live through this. Uh, lack of rain left behind barren farmyards and fields throughout the nation's midsection top photo, making it virtually impossible to raise crops. The Colorado farmer at left had piles of dust that were tall as nine feet on his land. Oh, geez, it's just heartbreaking. Um, but what a testament to, you know, to, to faith and making things do and getting by. It's just really amazing to me. Sorry, I'm trying to Stick this back where it was. Can we have a little bit about the Dust Bowl and the Great Depression? This is the 1942 Red Cross Nursing Manual. A little bit about foods, uh, things you should eat, things you shouldn't eat, foods in, uh, that are rich in vitamins, vegetables, high in fiber. It's a very interesting you know, a lot of that book was about how you should eat, not what medicines you should take. And I think that that is a really good lesson to, uh, to learn, you know, in this day and age where we think that any kind of illness is going to need actual medication. I do realize a lot of illnesses do need medication, but, you know, if we would maybe eat better, then maybe we wouldn't have so many conditions that, uh, you know, require medication. But that's just my thought. You know, there are different schools of thought about all kinds of things. 1941 ledger paper, a little bit of Hardy Boys for you. This is so sweet. It's a prayer for guidance, and I thought it fit well with the theme of the Dust Bowl and the Great Depression because I, I believe you would just have to have a lot of faith to get through something like this. I thought that this page from 1972 was quite interesting. Uh, juxtaposed with the, um, the the photo of the Dust Bowl farmhouse. Now this is a this is a modern house from 1972. So the Dust Bowl. I'm not sh sure. 1930s was the Dust Bowl. So we can see that in 40 some odd years that there was a different landscape um, in in America. I thought that was very interesting. This is a cat hand butterfly, y'all. Cat hand butterfly. If you do not know cat hand, you need to know cat hand. She is fantastic. She has the best ideas and they are so much fun. So please check out cat hand. And you can you can Google cat hand butterfly and you will and you will just be astounded at the things that she does. She is hey cat hand. <laughs> Yeah, she is just a, a wonderful, wonderful person. Great crafter. Got a sparkly butterfly, sparkly paper, and a small um, unsized ATC that says believe. This is from uh, the Take 5 art project. Um, I did not like it when I did it, but gosh, these things are really growing on me, especially the stars. I kind of like the stars. Um, I think it's important that when you are making a piece of art and you are not happy with it, that you carry on with it. Um, I can't, I can't explain that. Um, carry on, carry on, carry on. <laughs> this is a fab, this is a paper swatch. It kind of comes apart like this uh, with a little uh, brad at the top that has an X for some hugs for you. And a pocket right here with more of the shiny dotty paper. This is a, um, a card for you to alter. It's already got an envelope and it's already got a stack of, um, of hearts for you to play with right there. I've got another stack of stuff right in here in this envelope for you to play with as well. And here's a little reminder that there's some play toys in here for you. It's like a toy box. It's a toy box in your journal. 
This is from the 1972 Better Homes and Gardens uh, book. This time it's periwinkle, and I have this growing outside my sunroom. Butterflies love it. Butterflies are very drawn to the color purple. They really do love it. I used to have like a butterfly bush, but I, um, I did not kill that, y'all. It, it just died, and I don't know why. I'll just leave it at that. Got some Harry S. Nielsen memorabilia for you. Some beautiful ephemera, this time from 1929. I love that stamp. It's very pretty, a two cent stamp. Another little pocket over here for you. And the last, the very last pocket has a dress form, a big chunk of pattern paper and some sequins because, you know, it, there just seemed to be a theme with, uh, with this book of sequins and sparkle and happy, happy, happy. So I wanted to capture some of that in that sequin pocket for you. This little butterfly book is $45. And this one is called Bless This Garden. You, you guys can see how nicely these would go together and how super cool they would look on a shelf together. They're like sisters. They like it. They like to be together. Or they like to be apart. Whatever you want. Doesn't matter. <laughs> this is a very... Um, this journal, y'all, has a big girth. Do you see that? It's got a big girth at the top. It's got a big girth here, but it's got a skinny spine. And the skinny spine came from the fact that this was a, a, a food packaging box that was a spinach and artichoke dip. Um, I bought it um, because my guy likes spinach and artichoke. And you can see the word artichoke right here, which I thought, I mean, even that kind of, <laughs> it's kind of cool because, uh, you know, we think about gardens and we think about all the things that we could grow in a garden and things like that. I am super lucky because I, I wanted a garden so terribly when I first moved into this house and I had a beautiful garden the first year that we were here. And, um, then it just got steadily worse and worse. But the thing is that my next door neighbors have um, an excellent garden. They grow strawberries, blueberries, blackberries. They grow thornless blackberries. Uh, they grow tomatoes like you just would not believe. They grow all kinds of peppers. And I take my coffee grounds and eggshells and I compost at their house. And then they give me tomatoes and peppers and all kinds of wonderful things through the summer. I also work for a farm. I'm the PR rep for a small family farm here and so I can get vegetables at the farm so I am lucky 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 to have fresh vegetables and um, not have to have to kind of um, till the soil and all of that I'm, I am just blessed indeed started you out with a butterfly here and some sparkly flowery paper for your bless this garden book and of course we have a story up here we think about stories about gardens you know the garden of eden um the book the secret garden which is just one of my very favorites alice in wonderland the tea party garden the you know the gardens of Downton abbey um I'm reading a book now called Cat Among the Pigeons, and it's by Agatha Christie. It's an Inspector Poirot book, and there's a gardener that figures prominently in that book, and his name is Adam, believe it or not. <laughs> I love this little card. This is a vintage card, and I just cut the front off of it. It's a little bit embossed. It's a bear family having a picnic in a garden. Something for you to color. Another little item from that Victoria magazine that I love so much. Oh my lord, you guys, look at this. Is that not like heaven? Absolute heaven. Birdhouses, rocks, feathers, flowers, a sketch pad. Oh my lordy. And of course, there's a story about it right here. I am crazy about that magazine. I sure do hope that I'll stumble across more of that. Oh my goodness. Something to color. Some bright um, tropical flowers for you. Fabric swatch. 
I like this little thing. It says, it's always sunny somewhere, which is a cheerful thought. <laughs> when we're having a day like we did yesterday when it was just cold and rainy and nasty. I, uh, I thought this little botanical card from 1977 was really neat. Um, it's Freesia, Freesia. And every time I think of Freesia, I think of, uh, do you remember the Devil Wears Prada? And they go into the ballroom and um, the boss says, do I smell Freesia? <laughs> <laughs> and Anne Hathaway freaks out because her boss hates Freesia. Do I smell Freesia? <laughs> okay, sorry. I love you to the moon and back. One of my favorite sayings in the whole wide world. And a super cool dictionary page that uh, it starts with L. It starts with lilac up here. And uh, there was also a definition for Lilith. In early semantic folklore, a female demon or vampire believed to live in ruins and other desolate places. In medieval Jewish folklore, the first wife of Adam before the creation of Eve. In medieval folklore, a witch believed to be a menace to little children. When I think of Lilith, I think of Cheers. I think of Fraser's wife, you know, on, on, uh, on Cheers, Lilith. More sparkly papers for you. I'm really digging this inky paper technique. A little bit from uh, the Alice in Wonderland book, the annotated Alice that I am really um, trying to save as much as possible. And this is a little picture of Alice and the rabbit. And uh, it says the rabbit started violently. This is the Peter Newell uh, illustrations. The book is in sad shape and I'm just piecing it out and doing the best I can to salvage what I can of it. This is a little bit about roses, and I love this. I thought it was such a pretty illustration. I think this is from the, um, it gives the different kinds of roses, hybrid teas, floribundas, grandifloras, very sweet. Um, uh, I used to love uh, the tiny little sweetheart roses. I had a lady bank. Gee whiz, guys, sorry, we were talking about Lilith, and then I uh, got halfway through my book, and I realized that my camera wasn't working anymore, so we'll kind of pick up where we left off. We were talking about Lilith over here uh, in our Vintage Dictionary page. We've got some more sparkly papers for you. I love doing this technique, and I finished um, these inky papers with a little bit of Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. And this is a sweet Peter Newell illustration from the Alice in Wonderland book, the annotated Alice that I am working so hard to um, to save. I um, it, the book is not in such great shape, but I'm I'm doing everything I can to um, to give it a new life because I think that old books are just wonderful and interesting. Roses right here. Um, I had no idea there were that many roses. You know, growing roses takes an incredible skill. I had a Lady Banks rose that was like a smaller kind of sweetheart rose that was growing out back when I first moved to this house. When I first moved in, this, this house was owned by a master gardener. And boy, I mean, it really showed. And then we moved in and we have dogs and they just kind of dug up everything. But, um... Oh well, <laughs> I love this little rabbit. She's been in the garden and she's been gathering some flowers. Um, this is from a 1985 ephemera collection. I've got some tickets here for you and a pointy finger that is pointing you right in here because you have some treats in there. Tim Holtz vellum, some lace, cardstock of course. This is a cat hand butterfly and I put on the back Cat Hand Butterfly. And if you do not know Cat Hand, you need to know Cat Hand. She is so super fabulous. Uh, she is a great crafter, a very sweet lady. And of course, we were just talking about doggies, and their one just popped up right there. I've got a Rhodesian Ridgeback, and I've got a little Beagle Dog, and they're both rescue animals. And we love them. And they kind of have the run of the house. More Tim Holtz vellum, and more of the handmade Indian paper more about roses. 
uh, a sweet little butterfly card. This is a card front. This is the balloon painting that we did last week. I am crazy about balloon painting. I want to keep doing it and doing it. I think it would be a lot of fun to do, like in the summer. Um, especially with kids, you know, just blow up some balloons. You stick the balloon in paint, and then you paint with it. And you don't have to paint flowers. You can paint whatever you want. More papers. More inky papers. This one is a stamped inky paper more of the balloon um, the balloon painting this is a card for you to alter and it's full of little hearts so you can I mean this whole pocket you know you got a pocket full of possibilities here you've got hearts you've got some beautiful shimmery heart paper you can make a few valentines if you want guys um, the shiny dotty paper Kind of love the shiny dotty paper, <laughs> more of the Indian paper, and some cardstock back here for you. All kinds of possibilities with wording here. Smile, you and me, love this, look at this. Remember, these books are meant for you to kind of tear apart and play with. And which includes the stuff in the books, but also includes the washi tape and the fibers and all kinds of things. I have to read this to you. It's one of the most beautiful things that I've ever read, and I know that you can appreciate it. What cannot letters inspire? They have souls. They can speak. They have in them all that force which expresses the transports of the heart. They have all the fire of our passions. They can raise them as much as if the person themselves were present. Having lost the substantial pleasures of seeing and possessing you, I shall in some measure compensate this loss by the satisfaction I shall find in your writing. There I shall read your most sacred thoughts. This is from a letter of Heloise to Abelard. Does that just not make you just swoon? <laughs> the art of letter writing. Lost art. Lost art, but maybe we could work on resurrecting it. I wrote a letter this weekend. It was the first letter I had written in quite some time. And at the end of writing the letter, I felt nice about it. I felt good about writing a letter. Uh, this is how to prune your roses. More papers. This is a double pocket. You've got some uh, border strips here, some little flowers here. These are fabric flowers. A pocket full of goodies to play with and more border strips right here. This is a smattering of dendronics. Dendronics is the study of trees, and it is a wonderful paper pack that is just full of beautiful imagery that is tree-related, you know, tree bark, the, the texture and the fibers of trees. It's just really so beautiful. We've got, since we're talking about trees, we've got some leaves up here. This is so neat, y'all. I hope you can see this. Do you see this envelope? It almost looks marbled. I know that it's not marbled, but I have no idea what kind of paper this is. And it's not evident on the inside, but it is evident on the outside. It's so beautiful. This is a piece of the um, Sakomane ephemera, this time from 1930. I don't know how they did that. It's absolutely beautiful. More cardstock, old telephones, and a part of a, uh, the greeting card collection that my pal sent me. I'm really loving this, loving this collection. And I thought a garden book needs a good snow scene, right? Isn't that just precious the way that everybody's outside in the snow talking? So beautiful. This is how to select food for health. I think, you know, if you're talking about gardening, then sometimes you do vegetable gardening. And I love this page from the 1942 Red Cross Nursing Manual. This is from the 1925 Sears and Roebuck catalog. Uh, this time a, a, a writing cultivator, because every good gardener needs a, a writing cultivator. This is the shaker ephemera that I've been having so much fun with that is ending, I'm so sad. Uh, attention, farmers and gardeners, the swift shore bone phosphate rises up as an aspirant for public favor and esteem with no ill words nor trend, trend, 
traductions <laughs> for any other phosphate. It chooses to stand upon its own merits. This is must do or not stand at all. Farmers and gardeners are the most discriminating individuals capable of soon learning the source of the most liberal returns for their outlay. My goodness, that is some more advertisement for bone phosphate, y'all. Our Great American Recipe book is about President's Day, which is coming up quite soon. A little more about the Dust Bowl um, and the Depression. I attended a one-room schoolhouse in Kansas, and sometimes when the dust storms came, the whole world seemed dark. We'd either stay in the schoolhouse, sometimes spending the whole night there, or cover our faces with wet rags and follow the fence lines home. In 1936, my family lost the farm and moved to Colorado. It's a lot of faith to just keep going when something like that would happen. This is a gorgeous piece of Tim Holtz vellum. It has a bird on it. I hope you can see that. Not so pretty. <laughs> and in the very back of the book is a nice big piece of pattern paper for you to work with. An oversized ATC and a dress form right here. Bless this garden is $45. I'll have both of these in the shop a little bit later on this afternoon. I appreciate you guys supporting my Etsy shop so much. I'm always so excited to see um, your notes about where the journals are ending up and how they're traveling the world and how they've become gifts for people. Just makes my heart sing, y'all. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.